What up, y'all? It's your girl, the Peacemaker, Chandler Joy, and you are now tuned in to Take Over TV. What's up? If I'm sitting up here just reading off a paper or reading off something, and then, you know, it just sounds too robotic for me. Hell yeah. It's on? Okay, cool. Yep, sure. it's on. All right, boom. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready to chop it up whenever you, you, you ready? Want. You sure you ready? Yeah. Because you're in the hot seat. You know what I'm saying? I, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. You feel me? So oh, okay. You feel me? Okay, Miss Chandler Joy. Yes, sir. I, I like the braids, though. You like them? Shout yeah. out to I'm Unique out of Shreveport. She hooked it up. She hooked it up. So how long did that take to do that? Mm, it took about a good... 40 minutes. That's it? Yeah, it took a good 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah. She think You think she could do something in my house? I think so. I think she can maneuver something. <laughs> it might take a little longer than, you know, right. minutes trying to figure <laughs> out what to do with it, but... I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So, uh, how did you find out about TakeOver TV anyway? I found out about TakeOver TV... Uh, from my boy Sean. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Sean. Okay. And uh, I checked some of your interviews out. I actually watched the one with Papa Hussein. Shout out to Papa. That's yeah. the homie. We got a song coming out. Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, it's a vibe. I like the aesthetic. And yeah. then my girl Bree works with you. So yeah. we have some mutual friends. Yeah, we do. We do. I just met Bree this weekend. Okay. So that Good was cool. Good person. Good yeah. party person. Yeah. Hard worker. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you're here. Matter of fact, I seen, I think I first seen you on Instagram, has it been, was it like a year ago? Okay. It, it's been a minute. Because I've been following you. Like when he, when Sean was telling me about you and I was like, let me follow. I was like, oh, I already follow him. Right. So. What? And then he had told me about you. I was like, I think I already follow her. And I, and I did. Uh, and I did. You know what I'm saying? I seen some stuff you did. Uh, I think you performed at Words with Lacte. Okay. One, one time. Yeah. And I was supposed time. to actually come down there and check it out. But, I mean, something happened, so. It's okay. I didn't get There's a chance gonna to make it. There's going to be plenty of Chandler Joy performances for you to check out. Oh, yeah? What's the next thing? The next thing uh, I have is going to be February 15th. Uh, there's this female collective performance thing going on here in town at the Agora Borealis. It's going to be me, Bree, slash Great Wave. She's going to do a set. Um, right. Moni, a couple of, you know, female artists repping the city. Right. Female empowerment type shit. Right, right. Can I cuss? Am I? Yeah, you can. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take on TV. This ain't uh, what they call standards and practices. <laughs> so let, let, let's, let's rewind all the way back. Okay. Let, let, let's go back to... Lily Chandler. Okay. So when did you first start singing? When did you know that you could sing? sing? When I was four. When you were four. When I was four years old. Low key, when I, uh, when I emerged into this earth, I knew. But when I was fully cognizant, I was like four years old. And I remember my mom telling me about it. I was just in the backseat of the car. And it was some song playing. And I started harmonizing. Um, to the song that was on the radio. And you know, singers and vocalists know like harmonization, that's, that's a pretty advanced um, quality to have at an early age because you got to have, you know, a certain ear to be able to match, you know, uh, mm -hmm. certain frequencies when it comes to like harmonies and stuff. So, um, yeah, when I was like four, I was like, oh, okay. But not only did I know that I could sing but at four like I knew it was gonna be like oh, okay so this is what I'm supposed to do like at four like real talk it was like all right this is what I'm supposed to do this is my purpose like this is what it is right here okay let's go singing church choir exactly I got cool. my first you know it's crazy what's that so the first time that I sang in front of people it was my head start graduation I was four and I had to sing the Star Spangled Banner and like my mom had like trained me because my mom's a singer. So, you know, the week before we were practicing every day and you know what I'm saying? I, you know, we was getting it ready because this was my first 
performance like ever in mm -hmm. front of people. I used to sing at the crib in my room all the time. But okay, so Head Start graduation comes, I get on stage, I freeze and I just start crying. Like I just broke down crying and I couldn't stop. And my mom was like, <laughs> What the fuck? She didn't say that. But she, was just <laughs> but like, she had to, like, like. But like, I was telling on. a friend when I was talking about this story, I was telling a friend, like, I think it was just like the anxiety of the power within that. Like, because when you have a certain type of voice and you, you convey certain messages, it's, it's like, it's very powerful. So I think my tender four-year-old self was like, oh, this is too much power for me to contain right now. Like, <laughs> so I had to just work through that. I had to work through that because I knew it was special without, you know, the frequencies that were coming out of me. So it's just, I had to just kind of own up to it. Cause at first it's kind of like fearing your own po power, like being scared of your own power. So I had to, right. I shook back though. It's cool. So did you shake back that? Did you go ahead and finish the um, the Star Spangled Banner? Or was, no, uh, that was just a wrap. No, it, it was, was done. Over. It was done. My mom just, you know, grabbed my hand and I just walked off stage and yeah. But then the next time that I sang, I was like, I'm gonna try this again. So the next time it was at my church, Harrison Chapel Baptist Church out of Spring Hill, Louisiana. You feel me? All right, and it was a song called "I Can't Give Up Now" by Mary Mary. And mm -hmm. when I did that, I went through the whole song. I finished the whole song, but I was crying through the whole song. It was it was it was interesting. It was just that anxiety. And then like the whole church was like touched and move and crying and that. Uh, it was it was a lot. It was good though. Right. Like people was vibing with it, you know. But I was just like, this is a lot. Like, how am I able to affect people this way? It's too much pressure. It was a lot. <laughs> But I made it. Yeah, we ended like the high school talent show. Oh, all school. the time. Did you win? Because by high school, I was I was straight. Yes, I did win. I, I'm just making sure now. You oh, know, no, you I didn't mean to be like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You good. You good. But no, I did. I did win. Um, yeah, I moved from Spring Hill, Louisiana to Shreveport my junior and senior year. What school did you go to? Cattle Magnet. Okay. And that my first year being at Cattle Magnet, I won the talent show there. I'm like, okay, new girl done won the talent show. Impressive. Yeah. Did you ever lose one or you won all of them? Have I ever lost? Dang. Um, no, I don't think. Like, if, if, if I didn't get first, <laughs> I was maybe like second. I don't recall getting third in like a talent. But I didn't really do a lot of talent shows like that. Right, right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. The, the ones that I did do, like your girl was first or second. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when did you start getting like serious about music? Mm, when you was like? i say about 16. 16? Like 16, I was telling my mom, I was telling my whole family, like, I right, boom, you know what I'm saying? Once I graduate, like I'm moving to LA, you know? And they would be like, okay, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like they wouldn't uh, reject the idea or discourage it, but they were thinking, you know, like the standard, a uh, student right out of high school does like you stay home for a couple of years then you go me three months after I graduated I'm out you know what I'm saying like like uh -huh. let's do this this is that's the platform that I need to be that's the environment I need to be around to really embellish on this so yeah when I was 16 I made up in my mind you know just let you know mom and dad when I turn 18 I'm moving to LA it was like okay but then as it gets closer to graduation, they're like, oh shit, she's serious. So 18, boom, graduated, cattle magnet, shout out to them. Three months later, moved to Los Angeles and went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Spent two years there. Then I went to the Musicians Institute of Contemporary Music, mm -hmm. both in Hollywood, California. And, uh, you know, got my credentials as far as like, you know, cause I wanna, not only do I wanna have a natural ability with music and vocals and songwriting, like I wanna learn as much as I can as far as like the, the book side of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, I went to school for that, graduated. And shortly after that, 
Damn, let me let you ask these questions because I'm 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 skipping. No, no, you go ahead. Okay, cool. You, you, you take you, you, you taking me through the whole timeline, okay, cool. so it I'm works for me. I'm just trying to give you the whole spiel, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. But, okay, so boom. I graduated MI, and maybe like a few months within that, one of uh, my mentors and coaches that I met at Musicians Institute hit me up about an audition for Zane. He's a part of the, or he was a part of the boy band One Direction. So had an audition for that. And that's how I got in the game as far as like professional background singing. So toured with him for a little bit. And then uh, after then, uh, did like, you know, different show, you know, Tiny Desk with Don Richard of Danity Kane. And uh, yeah. most recently the Kanye West services. And, you know, got to really like pay my bills and like, just professionally singing, you know, doing the iHeartRadio Awards, you right. know, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, like really traveling, doing this shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, okay. And like, I love background. I fuck with it. It paid my bills. It got me experiences. It got me mm -hmm. in the door to meeting new people. But I'm in this phase of my career right now where I'm like, it's, you know what I'm saying? We, we It's Chandler Joy right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So that's, that's where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I got my a little bit of juice in the industry with background, but I'm trying to re-emerge as, you know, solo artist channeling fully. You feel me? So how long you stay in L.A.? Eight years. Eight years. So I moved out there 2011. Uh -huh. And I recently came back to Shreveport April of 2019, this past year. But I'm still back and forth with L.A. Like I still got my crib in L.A. and everything. But right. Doing a little bit more business here, kind of taking that, just, I don't know, I really, and it came out of nowhere too, but I really felt led to like, just kind of take everything that I had learned. And I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied with the work I've done in LA. I'm not done, but I'm satisfied right now. Mm -hmm. Let me take what I've learned and my experiences and kind of bring that energy back to Shreveport, a place that I feel needs it, a place that needs the seeds are there. They just need to be properly watered and, you know, taken care uh, of. You led me to my next thing I was going to say. So, so, what do you, so what do you think about the, the Shreveport music scene? With you being out there in L.A., I know it's a whole totally different scene. You got to experience a lot of different stuff. And then coming back here to Shreveport, I know it's totally different. So, I mean, what's your opinion on the music scene out here and, and, and what does it need? to make it pop flourish gotcha great question by the way so as far as like the talent in 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 different mediums too not just music but with t production you know film production with right. graphic design with even you know uh, the makeup artists and hair like in in all the different outlets there's undeniable talent in the shreveport and surrounding area um surrounding areas um Hmm. However, you know what I'm saying? I, I I think that there may be like a lack of outlets for people to really utilize here as far as like, you know, different events, different uh, even like buildings, you know, dedicated purely to, you know, art or right. music. You know what I'm saying? There's right. just a lack of like an entertainment scene possibly because of hmm what, what do you think you know like um, what because i'm still trying to figure it out it's a few theories that i have but what do you what's your spill on it i, I think you get you laid on something it is a lack of outlets that's how takeover tv evolved to be what it is because i felt like there's a lot of talented artists here but they have nowhere to display their talents or they have nowhere to <laughs> tell their story or, you know, things like that, because you just can't walk up to the radio station like, let me get an interview. You feel me? Like or Unless you're about to pay or unless you know somebody, you know what I'm saying? But outlets like myself, outlets like Social yes. Goats, uh, outlets like Spotlight and a couple yeah, of different more. Words can, over Latte. Words over Latte. We can offer <clears throat> artists a chance to get their story out there. You, you never know who's watching. Exactly. You never know who's watching. So even if TakeOver TV got one artist on. Yeah. That's exactly. a win. That's a win. And, and it's depressing to see artists work so hard and dedicate to their craft and then don't have no way to 
express besides posting on Facebook and, me? And, and doing stuff like that. Because we need y'all. Like, right. Artists, we, as much as it's an even exchange, like as much as y'all need artists to film, we need art. You know, we need and, people to. And you know then what I'm with that too, um, there's a lot of artists that just don't know how to properly market and promote their stuff. That's true. You know, they just post a video on Facebook to their friends and don't know how to get it out beyond that. They don't know about the uh, that that damn promote button on Facebook. You might have to put some money behind yeah. it, but it'll get it out there. You know what I'm saying? Just the lack of knowledge of that. Um, That's a great point. Some of it is some of it is on the artist having that um, entitled mentality. You know, you're not entitled to anything. You got to be able to form relationships yeah. with people. Ooh. So that way you can get your, you know, your craft out there. Because without, if you ain't got relationships, don't even worry about it. Because mm. you can't do all this on your own. I don't care yeah. how good you are, how talented you are. You're going to still need other people to, to further your career. I mean, that's just something you just are not going to be able to get around. Yeah. Even when you got a ton of money, you still need a relationship no, with absolutely. somebody. No, absolutely. Think of like the greatest artists in the world, whether it's Michael or Prince. Like, right. Them niggas had like 50 people <laughs> on their team. You right. know what I'm saying? Exactly. To execute exactly. one show. You know what I'm saying? Or one video. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So like, so, no, you definitely can't. But you, you said a few things. Um, damn, I'm trying to see. Because I was like, hmm. To remind me again, the last two that you said. Um, I, relationships. Okay. Properly promoting. Okay, 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 I, okay. All right, yeah. All right. all right. So the properly promoting part, man. Okay. So in the the, I'm gonna say eight years. Okay. Six to eight years of me, you know, uh, working professionally in the business, do 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 do, being an independent artist, like, just recently in the past month. Mm -hmm. I uh, have a manager like in the in the eight years that I've been doing this I didn't have a team I didn't have a manager I didn't have like I do all my graphic stuff my cover art I do my website I do everything you know it's what a I'm lot saying? of work because and it is a lot of work yeah. and I'm thankful that I have the help and the resources that I have now but I say that to say like I had to learn how to be my own promoter. Right. How to be my own. And I'm looking at the camera's eyes because I'm like, if you're an artist, like, until you get to the point where you have the resources or a manager or a team, you might have to figure some shit out by your, yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I had to be my own promoter. I had to be my own manager. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? People calling me or Kanye's team calling me or the people that I've worked with, that was from, you know, a, there was no middleman. It wasn't a manager. It wasn't a, you know, I just got a call like boom, 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 bet. You know what I'm saying? That was just me being my own promoter, my, my biggest fan. You know, I got to mm -hmm. promote myself. You know what I'm saying? So I think that there is a lack of that in Shreveport and they may just not know. I, I think I might have an advantage being in L.A. and just being in the right. environment where I was able to learn how to be an independent artist. My major at Musicians Institute is called the Independent Artist Program. So I get it. I have an advantage where I literally learned how to be like literally on paper, like a certificate, a document. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Saying that I took courses learning to be an independent artist. So I get it. I have an advantage. But a lot of stuff we can just figure out, you know, and it's not even complicated. And like, that's the thing. If you don't know, you got to seek the knowledge. You got to ask people. There's there's resources around here if you look hard enough and ask the right people. I'm telling you. Once again, relationships. And then a lot of just plain on research, you know. Absolutely research. No, right. that's so true. When I when I went on Wix.com to make my website, I didn't know the first thing about I'm like, man, but I figured it out and I got a bomb ass website, chandlerjoyflow.com. Check that mug out. I'm gonna check it out. And relationships. <laughs> it's another thing yeah. that I wanted to oh, you check my website out? You yeah. like it? How you feel about it? It's simple. You know what I'm saying? Very simple <laughs> it's simple. To the point, you but had, still I didn't mean to cut you off my bad. No, you but you had it tabbed out where Here's the videos. Here's the about. It, if it's simple, it ain't got to have stars falling out the sky and all this different stuff. <laughs> if it's simple, 
And it functions simple, I'm good with that because I'm going there to look for information. And if I can access that easily, it just makes it better for me. Because if it's too complicated, I'm going like, man, screw it. I, oh, can't, yay. I, can't, I can't figure this out. So I'm glad that it was nice it. and it was, it was simple. Able to. And when I say simple, that means in a good way where it functions easily. And Great. I can find out information you easily. You can navigate it easily. Nav there it is. That's the word I was looking for. Navigate. navigate. Exactly. And then I wanted to address uh, another point. You about can address all you want to. Okay. This got a full battery. Go ahead. Hey, full battery. <laughs> Let's go. Preparation. Yeah. So, boom. I want us to address the relationship. So, right. And I say this with love, but this doesn't account for everybody. This is just a general, uh, uh, a general, you know, outlook based off, you know, what I've kind of perceived. You know what I'm saying? In in the what six five six months of me kind of being housed here in Shreveport, mm -hmm. people here don't the 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 networking game is not really strong around this month. And and I don't want to say networking. Nah, that's exact. Okay, that's what it is. I think it's too much networking as opposed to like forming like partnerships or relationships or you know what I'm saying like you got to kind of form a, a a solid type of communication it's not like and when I go to functions here it comes off super networky like I'm meeting you you know with an agenda you know what I'm saying on some type shit hmm. not everybody but it's just like do you think I do this what do you do do you think it's clickish Oh, oh hell yeah, it's <laughs> But I'm, you know, I'm adaptable. You know, I'm a musical right. sign. Right. So I just hear it's in this mug. So I'm able to, like, adapt to different clicks. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll just be chilling. But I do notice that it's, like, super clicky. So you, and, like, people be gossiping a lot here. People like gossip around. So are place. you saying people go to functions, and, like, mostly with an agenda and seek out different people? Or I would say, but... Words over lattes is cool. I, like, I, I like that. I, I like went to that. Josh's last night for the first time. Got to shake my ass. Look at you. You know what I'm saying? I hadn't, sh I hadn't shaken the ass in a minute. You're you supposed to be working. He's supposed to be out there shaking no ass. Uh, hey, workplace. <laughs> you got to have the balance. I, I understand. But Josh's lounge is cool. And, you know, any of the events I throw, flow culture, you know, it's going to be a vibe. It's going to be on some, like, chill right. shit. Right. I hope I'm not missing out on anything, but, like, I just get the vibe with the events that I go to that it's just super clickish and it's super like, I don't know, people, I don't know, maybe try to F with you because they know, you know what I'm saying? They know you can help them in some but way. But ain't that anywhere? To be that's honest not, with you, ain't, ain't that anywhere? <laughs> no, nah, this is very true. Yeah. This is very true. Right. The the clickish part doesn't apply as much in back in LA. Like it's super flowy, but as far as like the network and shit, that it that is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's but it's I, I think it's a way to go about it. It's a like it's a certain way to go about it. Right. But I don't know. Now, you listed you listed a lot of things that you've done. God okay. Dog it. Dang, they blowing up your phone. I know. Leave me alone. You, you know, did a lot of things. You, you, you listed a lot of stuff. Uh, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, which 99% of the people here can say they've never been on. Yeah. How, how, how did that come about? I didn't get a chance to check out the clip. Okay. I did so, it twice, too. So, so okay. Who, who are you on there with, and how does that whole process work? All right. Boom. I was with Zane. He went, he went on the Tonight Show twice. Um, and uh, we had did a lot of different shows, and he was just booked to do the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So we, you know what I'm saying? Okay. We just did the Tonight so, Show. <laughs> so how was your nerves? I mean, cause, mm. cause I mean, millions of people look at Jimmy Fallon every night. Nah, that's true. Uh, my nerve. Uh, it was more so excitement. You know what I'm saying? It was more so excitement, and then it was my first like TV. Like where I'm gonna be like seen, like oh that's Chandler, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so, as far as like vocally, I was excited. Mm -hmm. 
and look wise too. But like, I think if I had any anxiety towards anything, it was just making sure that I looked okay. Not right. on some vain shit, but you gonna be on TV. Yeah, you, you know, on that. So you on national be, TV. Right, you know, this ain't sure Fox Thirty Three. We talk about you on national you TV. Know, exactly. Yeah. I don't need to have no lipstick on my teeth. You know, anything can happen. So if anything, it was anxiety as far as like how you know making sure I'm straight. But uh -huh. it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was. I was kind of more excited about playing with the roots. That was kind of my main oh, damn. situation. Like you know, Quest that? Love and all them. Like. It was cool. Like, I, I I, think they might have been in, like, well, the first show, I think they were all kind of, like, drove a little bit because sound check started a little late. So, uh, okay. you know, they weren't as receptive to me being like, oh, man, like, because they were just over it. But the second time we did the Tonight Show and, and you know, we made sound check on top, like, everything was cool and smooth. They was super chill, super, you know. Right. It wasn't, it was stress-free. The first time it was a lot of stress because of other stuff, but the second time it was stress-free. You get a chance to meet Jimmy and talk to him? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a quick little Hey, how you doing? Right. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. You know what I'm saying? Keep it moving. Right, right. So you was on The Voice? Yes. Doing background for Zane. I forgot I was on, I forgot I was on the board. Mm -hmm. Look at you. But I didn't audition like uh, Right, just doing the background stuff. Yeah, Zane, you know, was 2015 Zane just did a lot of shows. That right. Was when he released his album. So it was show after show after show. So yeah, he was a, a guest on The Voice, um, like in one of their final rounds. And uh Okay. Yeah. I forgot about that. That's crazy. Now one performance I did see you do which I thought was Real cool. I, I like the tiny desk. The tiny desk thing. I, I watched. Um, I got turned on to it. Um, Big Daddy Kane. Nice. Did a performance on there. Then I started checking them out. Then I saw Big Boy. He did hey. one Wu Tang Clan. And then I got to see Chandler Joy on there. Uh, I'm gonna be back. It's gonna be a Chandler Joy set. Oh yeah. This time I'm back. Yeah. Where Where is that located at anyway? Washington D.C. Okay. I was kind of wondering where that was at. Yeah, Washington D.C. So how, how was that? It was great. I it was a great experience. It was it like cuz it really is an office space. Like while we were performing, we had uh -huh. a, like an audience. How, so how big is the audience? I was I was thinking it can't be that big. Nah, it doesn't it was, look like that big of a like place. No more than 20 people. That's why I figured I said it can't be it's more than about 20 building. 25 people. But the section the just section small. Is, yeah. yeah. And even when we were performing, we had our listeners and everything, but it was still people working on the cubicles cuz it's like mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that was cool. Like, I, I like that vibe anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like right. stripping all the, like all the cameras and all the, you know, extravagant production is cool, but I, I just like a nice intimate It was just space. simple, intimate, kind of lounge, kind of like, yeah, yeah. that's my yeah. vibe. Um, but, um, yeah, we, we were kind of in zombie mode, like on autopilot because we, uh, we had to be at the place at like eight or nine and mm -hmm. we, uh, took a red eye and we didn't get to DC to like three or four. Ooh, so so y'all just like, all eh. few. And then it's different time zones, so it was right, like, eh. right. Yeah. Was you coming from LA doing that? So oh, you talk about what three hours? Yeah, and then we got to the hotel and check. We forgot to do early check in and check in one oh. till eleven, so it wasn't like we could chill for a little bit. Like we had, it was a thing. Yeah, it was a thing, but it's cool. Dang. Stuff that happens like this is very normal. So you, you said you're gonna do your own. I want to go. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm speaking that into existence. Like I'm a like document this. What is this? January twelfth, January. I think it's the fourteenth. January fourteenth, two thousand twenty. <laughs> Chandler Joy said, "Within a year, within two years, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be on Tiny Desk." So I'm, document I'm this. I'm going. So y'all like go back and say, she said she was going to do that shit. I did. Uh, really? It's going to be soon. Definitely uh, within two years. Definitely. Good. Definitely. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> How'd that come about? How was he? Just give me the give me the whole spiel about that. Because you know everybody going to want to know about yeah. how you got involved. With For Kanye. sure. So um, I have a lot of close friends uh, who work in the industry as well. Right. And um, a couple of my friends, uh, Tiffany Cross and Just Live, check them out on Spotify. They cool. They the homies, Cali girls. Um, 
They had been singing with Kanye for a little bit, and I, I knew Kanye had something going on. Like they were the first, um, a part of the first group of uh, choir members, because it started off very small, like mm -hmm. maybe 30 people. And it was just, it was a private function. It was every Sunday and it was completely private and it was just, it was super discreet and it was just for, you know, his friends and family and, you know, other, you know, A-list celebrities. It, it would be maybe like, I don't know, no more than 50 people in attendance. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I guess it got to a point where he was wanting to expand the choir. Because, mm -hmm. you know, now looking back now, it's like 200. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. So, okay, so boom. Um, my girl Tiffany and Liv, they were already in the choir. And I'm like, oh, that's tight. You know what I'm saying? Um, then maybe like two to three weeks afterwards, uh, Tiff and Liv both hit me up. And they were like, hey, so um, Jonathan, who is like the production, uh, mm -hmm. he helps with that. You know what I'm saying? With the production and everything. Uh, so Jonathan is looking for some referrals for additional singers for this Kanye situation. He's trying to get the choir to be bigger. So we're at like, you know, 20 or so people now. He's trying to expand it to 60. Are you able to make rehearsal tomorrow? I said, hell yeah. I'm <laughs> what time? Yeah, when and where? You know what I'm saying? What time I need to pull up? And yeah, I was rocking with them for like two months and then uh, ended up doing uh, Essence with Don. And yeah, I had a little two month run with them. For sure. So how, so how is he? Oh, how, how is he? being around him? Man, it's really, I like observing anyway. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a natural observer, but it's so funny and so interesting. Like, dude is really like on some genius level shit because, and he's so hands on, like he is hands on. So he would be at every rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? Um, he even would like style us like in the dressing room, like in this small ass dressing room. You know what I'm saying? With his stylist, Kanye is right there, like being like, okay, dress her and do, 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 or dress her in these. And I'm just sitting there being styled by Kanye and his team, like, what? And then, so he would go from rehearsal to the styling team, then to the construction team, because he, like, he designs and builds his own sets. It's like yeah. a dome situation. Yeah. So he would be, he's very hands-on. Talking to the choir one minute, talking to the stylist one minute, talking to the, these construction workers, like, can you actually cut an arch there? Like, very, very hands-on. Yeah. That's cool. Like I said, everybody can't say that. Yeah, he cool. You've done a lot of stuff uh -huh. that a lot of people can honestly say, like, damn, Lord I God. wish it God. was me. Shout out to God. I mean, it can be, you know, if you put your mind to it, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I just feel like I, what's for me is for me, you know, and I'm just thankful to God to, you know, have certain things on my resume. And the thing is, it's only the beginning. Like, it's, it's so interesting to even hear you. And it's, it's also um, humbling as well, because like in my mind, sometimes I'll be like, I have so much more to do. And I just do feel that way. Right. But, you know, you saying that is a divine reminder to just pat myself on the back. You know what I'm saying? And you should. About what I have accomplished instead of focusing on what I have to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I... It's only the beginning. And you got, you know, and you got some dope stuff too. I saw a performance where you were singing and and I you had a little band stuff. behind. Yeah. I do that it, that was stuff. on your website. Chandlerjoyflow.com, check it out. Check out my music. I just released yeah. the EP. Like Come on, y'all. Tell us about check the me out. Tell us about the EP. Okay, so I just released uh well, in September, a few months ago, I released uh, an EP called Searching and Finding. And um, I actually recorded it a week after uh, coming back home from like a two week hospital stay. Um, I battled with Crohn's disease, you feel me? And, and it got it got real bad, you know what I'm saying? And I was instructed to stay home. And I was in LA at the time, I was, cause my doctor's in LA, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Louisiana is not as progressive when it comes to the medicine world, but that's a whole nother thing. So I yeah. still see my doctors in LA because I can't play with my condition. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
So boom, I'm in LA and you know, was in the hospital for like two weeks. It was crazy. And then I was instructed to just lay low and stay home for a week. And I came up with that album or that EP while technically being bedridden. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of energy in that mug. It's a lot of intention. You know what I'm saying? Because that was the only outlet I had at the time. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, you can you can feel me. You can oh, feel me. On iTunes? iTunes, Spotify, yeah. Google Play, YouTube. What else? You feel me? Amazon Music. Check me out. Searching and Finding. SoundCloud. Videos coming? Video yes. coming? Videos. Because you know, I'm a blogger. I love videos. Videos, uh, plural. Yeah. Coming. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I got I got some. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have videos for each song because it's a five track EP. So within the next six months, I'm gonna have videos for all five of those songs. And you know, your girl kind of be on some creative director, conceptualizing type stuff. It's not mm. gonna be your average video. So be ready for some messages to be conveyed. Be ready for some energy to be felt. I know. I'm ready. I'm ready to check this out. Yes, sir. Because, you know, you are the creative type. You, you, just, you think so? Yeah, yeah. You, you got that vibe about you. Okay. It don't seem like it's just going to be a simple video. Uh, I'm glad that you know this. Yeah. I'm glad that some you things, know. Some things you just know. You're nah. a smart man. You're very intelligent. I, I do what I can. You know, it, after a bottle of Crown Royal, I'm even more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> man, what? I'm even more intelligent. I'm trying to tell you. Shoot, what? Let's go. What? I should have had some with me. You should have. Uh, we could have took a shot. The, the after party. The after party. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. No, now, we gotta... Most interviews, I do ask a crazy question if I could get one in Let's now. go. Okay. I'm going to have to set this up because it it's only going to make sense. I'm listening. Single? Am I single? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, you know what's crazy? What's I'm that? gonna answer the question, but you know what's so crazy? What's that? When I was at work earlier, you know, side hustling, shout out to Pierce Tacos. When I was at Love work, that place. Come through. When I was at work earlier, a guy asked me the same thing. And like, I get that question all the time. You feel me? But like, for the first time in a minute, like in the like for the first time in like five years, the answer is not no. Like, but I don't know. Stop. See, you got me blushing. You caught Good. me off guard with this. This ratings. You caught me off guard. <laughs> I gotta turn around. You caught me off guard. Look at this. So like, boom. I definitely got you know what I'm saying. A special someone in my life. Thank you, God, for this person. You know what I'm saying. I definitely have someone that I'm feeling that I support, that supports me. I care for him, he cares for me. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's beyond a label. That's why it's hard for me to be like, see, right, taken, right. complicated, because it's the, beyond a label. And the only reason I asked that the, question- You know what the fuck going on? <laughs> and the only reason I asked that question, because it was going to set me up to like, when guys shoot they shot, where the hell, where they mess up at? <laughs> by being head ass, by, like, by, <laughs> by not being fucking, Man, we we can talk about this for a whole another thirty minutes. Don't get me started. Okay, get me give me give me a good solid two minutes. All right. It, <laughs> the lack is because this could help some other guy out. You this know what I'm is saying? true, and I think yeah. the music nowadays has a lot to do with the way that men's minds work. There's just a lack of respect with the approach. You know, I don't know if it's because I'm like just old school. You know what I mean? And you know, there's there's just a certain chivalry and respect that is lacking you know what i'm saying and it's just like and then we're in this whole like side chick side nigga stage or phase of society we're in this like we're in this weird phase of society where it's like i i think people just don't know how to approach on a romantic level anymore and it's just like I don't know, man. You think it's because of this thing right here? This damn yes. cell phone, social media? Social media is definitely a factor. Yeah. Social media is definitely a factor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lack of just like people knowing how to just have normal human interactions. Even if you just go to a dinner and like browse the tables 
everybody on that mug is probably going to be looking down on their phones. And it's just like, talk to each other. Like, what? So our sense of communicating is just weird. And niggas just think that they can step to you and just say whatever. And you just going to be like, okay, nah, you got me fucked up. And some women are like that, where they're just like, oh, you're cool. Like, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's good enough. That, that, that's good enough. So tell everybody, um, <laughs> golly, I can't even get it out. So tell everybody where they can uh, find you on social media, get everybody your social media handles. Boom. And we're so going to wrap it up. It's my government name. You know what I'm saying? Chandler Joy. Uh, ChandlerJoyFlow.com is the website. But on all social media, it's Chandler Joy. Simple, just like that. Chandler Joy, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, just Challenge or Google me. You feel me? Challenge or She got some stuff out there, man. Yeah. Y'all need to go check her out. And I appreciate you for, you know, dialoguing with me. It's not just no question, answer, question, answer. It's a conversation. I, I kept my word, you know what I'm saying? And I, I kept really my word. appreciate that. Yeah. I do. And I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Until part two, it's time to go to the after party. Hey. And there it is. <laughs>